Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome back to Women's View on Ahl Bay TV. Now if you were tuned in before the break we were having a very interesting discussion on morality. Um, we will answer many questions as um, we said is um, does Islam or does is morality defined by Islam? Has, society, has morality in society declined? And many aspects regarding that as we know that Islam does um, pr um, provide us with a moral system where we where our principles and morals are abided by that but inshallah now we'll be discussing may, um, many more aspects regarding morality we also have more of your emails and comments posted on facebook so inshallah we'll be mentioning them in um, the show today um, so just to remind you all that this is a live call-in show so if you would like to call in with your views or opinions then please do call in with the number on the screen we'd love to hear from you Alternatively, you can email us at womensview at ahlbait.tv. That's womensview at ahlbait.tv. Inshallah, all your emails will be read out during today's show. Inshallah, if I get them on time. So, once again, I'm your host, Zahra Al Alawi. Today with me is Sister Suhaila Chattu. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, um, we, we, got, we got an email coming through. So, let me read the email out and then, inshallah, we'll go back to our, um, our discussion. This is from Sister Zahra Kazimi. She says, Assalamu alaikum, dear sisters. I read about your topic today. So important. Um, such an important topic. Um, don't want to miss my question because of um, time shortage. So sending it a little early. Thank you very much. She said, how can we develop morality skills like patience, especially for youth? The age when all your energies are at the maximum and you easily, you easily get desperate about little things. So if you can share some simple and practical tips about developing patience, particularly in youth, so that we can utilize our energies properly. And don't waste them um, on important, don't waste so important part of our life. Thanks for all the wonderful life discussions. Um, it's very enjoyable and enlightening. Jazakallah. And yes, please um, send my salams to Sister Sakaina, who must be watching you online also. Zahra from Pakistan. <laughs> so I think that's Sister Sakaina, Bimji, if I'm not mistaken, from Toronto. So it seems like Sister Zahra does have contact with Sister um, Sakaina. So she sends her salam. And a very interesting topic. And first of all, thank you, for, um, Sister Zahra, for sending in your emails. A very interesting um, question, yeah. patience. I mean, it seems like many people have run out of patience these days. You see people getting divorced. You see people wanting things really quickly. They can't wait. They want it now. So Sister Zahra said practical and simple tips of um, installing patience yeah. within the youth. Well, I think what well, better month to discuss this in than this month. I mean, we're in the holy month of Ramadan, and that's the month where we're abstaining away from food, drink, our desires, mm. like everything. And we need to just be, we're having like a cleansing period for our souls. Mm. We're trying to purify our souls in this month to stay away from the things which aren't necessarily good for us in abundance. Mm. So I think this is something which is testing our patience as well, mm. because we need to make sure that throughout this whole, you know, however many hours you are fasting, mm. you need to be patient um, to have the patience to be able to abstain. So mm. this is a good month to be able to practice yeah. physically patience. Um, I think another way to practice patience is, um, I don't know, like, you know when you have, like, a trouble or something just goes wrong, I guess you just, you need to kind of wait it out and just trust mm. in Allah that everything will be okay. Because after... Surely after hardship comes ease, that's what it says in the Quran, doesn't mm. it? So I think once you're put into a situation where patience is needed, you're, I think it would come automatically. Mm. So you just need to have the faith, and um, I think that will be the tool to get patience. I don't know if you have any other Definitely. tips to give her. Well, like you said, the holy month Ramadan, this yeah. is a month where we fast, so we are, in a sense, um, practicing patience in many aspects mm. and in many dimensions. So. When we not eat, then at the end of the day we wait and then we yes. eat. So we see the reward after we are patient. And like you said, that um, after patience there are great, like Allah says in the Quran, in Allahumma asabarin, truly God is with the patient. So many people sometimes, I think within youth, I mean, if they're, they're religious youth, if they read about the, the hadiths and the Quranic ayat about patience, they would just. You know, they would just automatically become patients. I remember when I read some of the um, narrations about patients and some of the Qur'ans, it really makes you shake and think, you know, Allah truly knows what's good for you. And, and at the end of any hardship or at the end of anything you want, Allah will give you what yes. you want. 
So um, I think there's many aspects, even the imams talk yeah. about many aspects of patience. I mean, sometimes we're so materialistic, we want everything, we want it now, but it's not really that because that's not what achieves um, victory or yeah. success at the end. It's when you practice patience to become a stronger person. So uh, I think also whatever um, Allah does give to you, mm. with whether he tests you or just puts you into a situation, he always knows that you'll be able to come out victorious. Mm. And so then we need to trust that we can be patient. And even though sometimes yeah. we may doubt ourselves, you just keep persevering. And the belief in yourself and the belief in the Ahlul Bayt, the belief in the teachings of the Holy Quran, that will be enough, to, as you said, mm. to put you through and shake you and say, hey, you know, our Ahlul Bayt went through so much for us. Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, he saved our religion for us. So we must be patient as well because mm. our trials and our tests are what can, you know, help build our paradise, yeah. inshallah. Inshallah. So. Great, great answer. I hope you, you're still watching Sister Zahra because I know she's emailing from Pakistan. Yeah. I don't know what the time is in Pakistan <laughs> at the moment. But um, moving on to what Sister Zahra said, I mean, um, how to kind of instill patience within the youth. Morality in general, I mean, all the moral aspects we have, you know, manners, akhlaq, everything. Um, how can we, as we mentioned, um, society's morals have declined. So how can we kind of instill morals in general within society? What steps could we take or anything? Well, I'll kind of come at it from an Islamic perspective at first. Um, so, of course, first of all, um, we'll have to remember the teachings of Quran, Ahlul Bayt. Um, secondly, I think it's important to remember the transiency of this world, mm. that we're not in our permanent abode. Our permanent abode is the Akhira. Mm. This dunya is all temporary. So whatever we do here, as I said before, we're just, you know, our deeds are accumulating to help like build our place in the next world. Mm. And we always need to remember that whatever we do have in this world, we're always confined by the space and time. If you go to the next level, it will be Barzakh, and then above that will be the Akhira, and every time you go up that step, there is something which is even more amazing, and we can't understand that here. Mm. So we need to make sure that to be able to benefit from the abundance of blessings in those places, we need to be good people on this earth. Mm. And if we remember, Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut, that every soul shall taste death, we can't run away from it, we can't ex you know, escape it, it's a fact that we are here on this earth and we are going to die someday. Mm. And what did Imam Ali say in the Nahj of Allah, in one of his sermons, he said that um, make sure that, um, make your ears hear the call of death before you yourself are called by death. Mm. And, you know, it's as if we're sleeping through this whole life. We need to make sure that our actions are, aren't ones that we're sleeping, we're actually awake, we're, we're taking action for ourselves. Mm. Um, because we need to act as though we're going to live here forever, mm. but at the same time die tomorrow, mm. so that you know our actions will be for the next world. Um, I think also just generally, like if you want to have good company and you want to feel loved by people, then you have to yourself show that you can be a loving person, and you know you need to show people compassion, love, and care. Because only when you show these to others, you'll be treated like that yourself. Mm. Um, you, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't def um, judge anyone based on their colour or their creed yeah. or whatever university they went to or school or anything like that or their religion. We need to also, because when we respect others, we'll automatically gain respect ourselves. Mm. And then also if you take that, that you need to respect your, res yourself first, that brings in hijab. So I think yeah. morality and hijab are very much interlinked mm. because when you are wearing your hijab, then you're feeling like you're the flag bearer of Islam and you want to show that this religion is peace, that you know we're not being oppressed as we're wearing this. We're doing this because it's helping us to become a moral being. We're not being judged on our looks. We're actually being judged on our moral character inside of us, which has been built up by our experiences or what we've been learned. It's like the whole nature and nurture argument. We've been nurtured to be like this and the nature around us can infiltrate into us but because of our nurture we can stand up strong against it or if yeah. it is beneficial then we'll allow it to like sink into us mm. and um, we need to make sure that 
whatever good that we do in this world, we shouldn't think too much of it. Like, we've been reciting Dua Maqarim Al-Akhlaq on Layla Sukkar on the 23rd night. And in the Dua, it says that we should make little of what good we do, mm. and we should make much of the evil that we do. And then we can learn from Imam Ali that um, whenever somebody has wronged us, that we should respond to him in kindness. And because if you, if you repay evil with evil, you're not going to go anywhere. It's the, whole, the eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Mm. And it adds the fuel to the fire. So you don't want to increase malice within people. You want them to, you want to attract hearts of people. So the only way you can do that is to, you know, let out all this love and compassion. Mm. And those who are really sincere will strive to purify themselves and give others compassion. And I think when we have this knowledge, then, you know, we'll be free from this materialistic desires which can yeah. affect our morality. Definitely a beautiful answer. Um, I think it's true, like you said, all these aspects we can kind of install, we can kind of install morality within society, but it's just the right ways of yes. going about it. Um, I have an email coming through. Salam alaikum, great topic. Loving the show and thank you to Sister Suhaila for excellent answers. My question is, you mentioned um, family issues and morality. How could you install morals within between a husband and wife and what should we do? Is there any guidelines that Islam gives? Thank you very much and hoping to see more topics like this soon. Okay, well, I think the viewer who called in earlier, he mentioned Surah Tahrim. Mm -hmm. And within Surah Tahrim, it um, does describe the you know, desirable qualities of a wife, like yeah. um, regardless of whether she's a divorcee or whether she is of a different race, there's just qualities in which she should be obedient, um, dutiful to the husband, she should care to the husband, and in return, the husband should act, should act as, in fact, they both should act as a covering for each other. Yeah. And the husband should provide for his wife and should show her love, because, of course, women are the mo more emotional gender of the two. And I think in order to have a successful relationship, you need that mutual respect. Because what you're, you two are, you know, Allah has put you together. It's you, um, your husband or your wife and Allah. And how can you be, you know, not respectful or not obedient to somebody who is helping you complete half your faith? Mm. And I also think that we, um, for a successful marriage you need to have a good understanding of each other mm -hmm. and you should be able to offer your ear and you should be able to listen mm -hmm. and speak before you think as well it's very hard to do that of course because we are you know we're still learning but if you if you really want to you just take a step back and you just listen and then you softly then discuss and don't argue you know just discuss mm -hmm. and have a rational conversation because if you do want to, I mean anger and desire you need to control those two. So especially in the marriage, you can have anger and desire. So when, the, when you have a good balance of those two, then you'll have a successful marriage, inshallah. Definitely, inshallah. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, like, it's a very interesting question. So thank you for the viewer that emailed in. I think this is like a perfect example. When I look at it, look at it, I think it's a perfect example of how sometimes it's the moral conduct of a society conflicts with what Islam, the, the moral system provided by Islam. For example, when I got, I got married when I was very young, when I was still in, um, well, I just entered university, so I was still um, 19, 18 or 19. So, um, and then people, like the peers, used to say all different yeah. things. And it seems like society's morals, they said, well, are you going to stay at home now? Are you going to cook? Are you going to clean the house? And I'm, you know, they were saying all these things, but in a sense, I looked at Islam and I said, well, I want to, like, I would want to stay at home. I want to become a housewife. I would want to cook for my husband or my household. So I think sometimes um, we get so brainwashed by the society we live yeah. in. We say, you know, we think that it's not worthy to stay at home, raise kids and um, look after the house. But in a sense, in Islam, it's, you know, um, it's all about obedience yeah. to the wife, to the husband. For example, we can't leave the house if our husband um, doesn't give us permission to. And then if you say that to someone that lives inside, say they'll just say, what? You can't yeah. leave the house without asking your husband? That's ridiculous. But in the sense that sometimes the morals, when someone doesn't understand the, um, the, the rights of their husband or wife, that's when problems will start to yes. come in. 
So even like you mentioned, um, Rasat al-Hukuq by Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, he says about the husband and wife that um, the wife, um, the right of the wife is that she has love, yeah. that she has respect, that you respect her, that you give her love and compassion and, and, and then, but um, the husband's right is that his wife has to be fully obedient to him. Yeah. So you can find, like you said, you can find all of these, the rights of the husband and wife, that, um, what in terms of moral conduct, how should we should behave towards the husband and wife, and then that kind, Islam kind of explains it perfectly. Yeah, exactly. And then that's how you can achieve a successful marriage, yes. inshallah. And I think that's why perhaps you are getting um, those comments by people like, oh, how can you be married and you know, at such a young age, when they fail to realize that we actually have the most perfect guidelines and mm. for, to be able to be respected by somebody who's going to love you so much. Yeah. And in fact, they'll be making your life easier so as mm. to like, you know, grow spiritually and, you know, in your religion as well. And I think, you know, how you said that, um, you know, you're just going to be staying at home, but mm. you're a perfect example of even getting married that you can go out and study and you sure, can go yeah, out and yeah. work. So and then still do the obedience exactly. to the Exactly, yeah. There's, you just need to have a great balance of everything mm. and then nothing can really overcome you. Inshallah. Inshallah. Definitely true. Um, for, you mentioned at the beginning the examples of the Ahl al-Bayt yes. as being the examples that we can learn, yeah. learn from in terms of moral conduct. Um, you know, what examples do the Ahl al-Bayt bring us in terms of morality? Okay, well, there's one story which always strikes me of Imam Ali alayhi salam after the Battle of Nahrawan. Um, there was a lady he saw sitting outside her house, it was late at night, and she, was, she looked like she wanted to cook something. So Imam Ali salam walked her, over to her, he approached her, and then as he was approaching her, he heard her just sending out curses onto him and his family. So Imam Ali salam, obviously being the most perfect being, did not obviously react in any way, but instead went up to her and asked, lady, what's wrong? And she said, oh, I, I'm sending my curses on um, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, because he killed my husband and my brother in battle. Yeah. And now I have nobody to cook for. I have nobody to cook for. I have no one to bring me food so that I can cook. Yeah. So, before, so in the evening, I tell my children that I'm going out and that they should return to their beds and that I will bring them their food. But in, they, in the end, they just fall asleep yeah. on an empty stomach. And... Yeah. Imam Ali salam, being so merciful, he said, don't worry, I will bring for you wheat and I shall make you bread every day. Mm. And the lady was like, no, no, I can't do that. But in the end, of course he did. Mm. And he was doing this for so many days. And then one day, the lady's daughter saw Imam Ali salam, when he was just leaving their house. Mm. And the daughter said to her mother, do you know who that was? Mm. And the mother was like, no, I never actually got his name. So the daughter replied, that was Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. That was the man you were cursing all these times. Mm. And that woman was absolutely overwhelmed. And she ran to him and literally like, threw him, herself at his feet and was said, please forgive me for cursing you. I did not realize your kindness and compassion. And Imam Ali salam, being the most incredible being, he turned around and he said, you should, not, I sh you should not be seeking forgiveness, but instead I should be seeking forgiveness from you. I'm sorry if I have hurt you in any way and I'm sorry that I have taken away your family members and you know like even other like what did Rumi say about him he said that in the battlefield you are the lion of your lord and in generosity you who knows who you are mm. how can we even comprehend someone who's cursing you and you're going to help that family mm. and he also there was another story when he saw a Christian sitting on the side and he was begging. There was an old man and Imam Ali salam, was with his companions and he sat down and told his companions, how dare we see this man here sitting here begging? Mm. Because when he was younger, he was looking after our state and now our state can't even look after him. So I want you to look after him. Mm. So he's taught us that we must love our brothers in faith and our equals in humanity. Mm. That there should be no divide just because somebody's of a different faith or of a different race. There's nothing like that. Morality says that we, we are all equal. We are all equal in Allah's eyes anyway. When we go for Hajj or Umrah, we're all wearing our ihram. Yeah. Nobody can tell who's richer, who's more knowledgeable, who's done this or done that. Yeah. Everyone, everyone is just one. And that's the Ummah. And that's the only way we can unite ourselves together if we're able to you know, draw away from such stereotypes that you know, we shouldn't go here or there. Mm. So... Definitely true. I think the Ahl Bayt are just the perfect examples exactly. in, in 
in terms of moral conduct, I mean, when we look at each and every member of the Ahl al-Bayt, we see, you know, we're just completely, um, you know, melted away by their generosity. And there are many Imams as well, as you mentioned, that beautiful story by Imam Ali. There's many Imams that used to help even their enemies and then after, you know, after they passed away, only then they realized that that was the individual that used to help them. So, you know, we can learn so much from the Ahl al-Bayt and it's just for us to read on and yeah. to, to see their stories and get inspired by them. And even, like, you see non-Muslims like Mahatma Gandhi, who said, you know, Imam Hussain alayhi salam's story was the most tragic yeah. story and they can empathize with them. So, yeah. you know, we, we're so lucky that we are their followers. Yeah. So we should really take into account what they have done and try and reflect that into our lives so that we can you know, we can show them, show the world what beautiful teachings we have and what beautiful people we are trying to strive to become like. Mm. Because yeah. what excuse do we have not to? Definitely true, We've yeah. been given all the tools. Yeah, definitely true. We have another email coming through, so it's sent out. Well, let me just find it. Assalamu alaikum, um, sisters. I just wanted to ask, how can we be examples of, of great morals? So when someone looks at us, they get inspired by us and say, this is a person of great morals. Thank you for the great show, smiley face. And I hope to see more of these. Um, Sister Fatma. Okay. Um, well, I think I'd say that um, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, he even said that, okay, you know how sometimes when you're on our way to university, or on our way to work, we're sitting on the train. Yeah. And everyone's looking so moody as if it's like a Monday morning or not going to work again. Yeah. But the, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, did say is that a smile is even one of the best forms of charity. Yeah. So even something so small can make such a profound effect. Even um, to be a good moral being, I think we have so much responsibility as especially youths, yeah. because we're like at the peak of our you know, knowledge gaining and we can do anything to be able to help other people. Yeah. So if we see like an older lady struggling or an older man struggling, we should go and help them. Mm. And um, if we know of anyone who is sick or anyone who is in need of help, we should go and visit them, we should make sure we pray for them. And it's, always, it's not necessarily that you need people to recognize that you are being moral. It's, that's, otherwise then that's, your intention is the one, um, you need to have that intention that you want to help because it's coming from yeah. the heart, not to show. So even if people, perhaps, they might not recognize, just you yourself knowing that you've done your best to be able to help someone else, I think that's more than enough. Definitely true, yeah. There's many aspects. I mean, like I said at the beginning of the show, people automatically get um, attracted to people with good morals. Yeah. And everyone looks for that individual, whether it's within a friend or a partner or anything. And I think sometimes we, like you said, generosity and giving and helping someone, you know, without any selfish um, um, gain from it. I think like sometimes um, within Islam there are certain acts that kind of train the soul to have good morals. For example, charity, we know that, for example, zakat is wajib upon everyone to give. So um, giving charity as well. So I think when you give sometimes, give away from what you have, you kind of, it humbles your, your soul and you become an individual yeah. that will automatically kind of gain good morals. Um, there are many aspects that I felt as well that just, you know, prayer as well. I think sometimes prayer is, you know, humbling yourself um, in front of your Lord. Yes. There are some people that are so arrogant. And there are many du'as and, and um, acts of worship we can do that kind of humbles an individual. So the, that's just my two cents. <laughs> yeah, like even the actions in Salah, like you're bowing your head, you're mm. raising your hands up mm. to, you know, asking. That is really humbling yourself. Mm. And I think it, there's an, even a hadith of Imam Ali alayhi salam which says that there are two steps to heaven. Mm. The first step is to kick away your ego, to leave your mm. ego. And the second step is heaven, is Jannah. Mm. So it just shows that I think, you know, ego and materialism are two things which are linked together that mm. you know you feel like you've got everything in the world and then that just boosts your ego and say I am better than everyone yeah. and I think um, you could, I, don't, I don't know how the story relates but it's to do with materialism and mm. how you shouldn't be so attached to this world that I've heard this that when um, in India when they make these carpets mm. they make such beautiful carpets and they get sold for so little mm. so sometimes what they do on a few is they just strike like a knife through one of them to break it up mm. and that then shows them that this is temporary I'm not going to although I made it I'm going to have to give it away 
Mm. It's not mine. So it's just the way we should be on this world that we should not. We should make sure that we're not so consumed by everything that we see around us. Mm. But we need to make sure that we remember Allah is the one at the end who's providing for us all, and He's the ultimate one. Mm. And there's nothing around us that should be, you know, blocking our way to Him. Definitely, yeah. There's some stuff that makes us realize, and some stuff that kind of hardens the heart. For example, backbiting, ghiba. Sla- slandering someone, um, accusing someone, um, suspicion. I think all these stuff kind of hard in the heart mm-hmm. or even um, pride when someone thinks too much of themselves. I think that all hardens the heart and slowly you see someone's morals, you're like, they, they don't have yes. perfect morals. Um, we're approaching the end of the show, time flies, I don't know how, where time went. <laughs> but um, just, do you have any last words for the audience just at home, everyone watching from around the world? Just last words on the whole topic? On well, I just think that we, we have been given the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt as our two things that will guide us in life. Yeah. And we need, need to make sure that we steadfast to them, yeah. This what the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, left with us, you know. Yeah. So we have the responsibility to make sure that we can act in a way that is along the guidelines that we have been given because that's our responsibilities as Khalifs on this um, earth. Definitely a beautiful message. And um, thank you so much, Sister Taylor, for joining us today. I've really enjoyed today's topic and I'm sure the audience have as well. So thank you very much thank for joining us. Thank you very much us. for having me. Thank you very much. For the audience at home, I hope you enjoyed today's topic on morality. It's something that's really important and something that we must all work upon as we all try to achieve the best morals and principles. And we pray that um, Allah guides us and gives us more strength, inshallah, to stay on his path. Um, just before we end off the show, I'd just like to mention the competition that is drawing to, towards the deadline. The deadline is this Saturday, so you have three days left to send in your entries. So, um, so just mentioning that. Um, you can find all our shows, inshallah, uploaded online if you have missed any of our previous shows. If you have any comments regarding today's show or any of our future shows, then please do email us at womensview at ahlbait.tv and join our Facebook for updates on future shows. That's all for today. Inshallah, join me on Tuesday. Um, yeah, Tuesday with Sister Sakana Data where we talk about mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. So very interesting topic. So inshallah, see you then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.